Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the start of the 2020 GT World Challenge America Championships powered by AWS. I'm Greg Kramer, joined by Calvin Fish. Uh, Ryan Marine will be covering the action uh, in pit lane all season long as well. And it is a cool, cloudy morning here at Circuit of the Americas where this championship begins once again. And uh, the Sprint X classes uh, have seen some changes. We're going to start our coverage with qualifying here for the Pirelli GT4 America Sprint X Championship. And Cal, a lot remains unchanged, but there is one significant one. Yeah, we've added a third class this year. So we have the Pro-Am Championship, we have the Am Championship, which you saw in 2019. And this year, we've got the silver category as well. So those drivers that are categorized with the silver grading by the FIA standards, if they're teamed together, we have five entries this year, and I think a significant Entry is that Andretti Autosport McLaren with Colin Mullen returning to team up with Jared Andretti. They certainly showed a lot of pace last year, got three victories together. And uh, but as they go out on the racetrack right now, it's been a perfect weekend. We see a quick spin there by the KTM crossbow there. Yeah, the 71. Big news for that team, of course. Uh, Nikolai Elganian ran that in the Sprint Championship last uh, last year. Uh, they are doing a full season in Sprint X, and they have brought over uh, a young gun who is a uh, a writer engineering factory driver. Yeah, and Celia Howe is going to be joining this light in this car. There's a little bit of drizzle falling right now, which is a bit of a surprise. It wasn't in the forecast, so maybe that's what caught Nikolai out. This is the older, they call it the Frankenstein car internally within that group <laughs> because that is not the latest generation crossbow, which should be run at Long Beach in the next Sprint X round. Again, this is 15 minutes for each driver, essentially. Whoever's out in this session will start the first race. And then they will make the pit stop, change drivers, allowed to change tires, nothing else. Then they can come back out, and the driver who qualifies in the second 50-minute window will start race two. That's correct. And uh, the one-hour race, mandatory pit stop between the 25 and 35-minute mark of that 60 minutes. No tire changes, just a driver change. 60 minute will be the minimum. Excuse me, 80 seconds will be the minimum pit lane delta. Bit of damage there, I believe. So uh, some early drama. Now we see teams hitting pit lane. And Ready Autosport did not have the smoothest of runs here yesterday. Some technical issues on both uh, Jared Andretti's sprint machine and the Sprint X car. I see the uh, slippery flag out there, Greg. <laughs> That's a sprinkler system in the background there, not rain. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very good point. But this is that type of, of condition where it makes sense. I mean, if it's if it's obviously raining, you don't need that flag. But when there's parts of the track that are just getting this missed, I think it's a great idea for these uh, all these corner workers to put that out. Here's another look here. Oh, that's yeah, the number 20. The front here. That's a pretty nasty hit. That is. That is the number 26, unfortunately, the classic BMW entry in the hands of Toby Grohovic and John Rader. Now, in the Pro-Am class, if you run Pro-Am, your AM has to do the first qualifying session and start the first race, correct? That has remained unchanged, so odds are this is John Rader, and uh, he's fairly new to uh, racing competition, at least in four wheels and in sedans. Uh, he's a stout athlete, of course, uh, and uh, has done a lot of collegiate water skiing when uh, he was coming up. I think he's done some pro sailboarding as well, so he's got the competitive bug. He did run what they call the Winterfest that the series created at, at the Thermal Raceway in, in California and had a couple of podiums there, so he's got potential here. He is an avid cyclist too, so just got caught out by the conditions. It's very cool here this morning. That little bit of drizzle out there is certainly making it very uh, treacherous and uh, Everyone having to tread carefully here. We see a number of the drivers. A little bit of resurfacing has been done in the off-season. Big amount of lockup here from the number 63. That is the Janetta. Janetta from uh, Dexter Racing. Uh, it was going to be, we initially thought it was going to be Ryan Dexter and Warren, uh, the brothers. But Ben Anderson has taken over uh, for Ryan in that car, we understand. And, uh, just exploring the limits there and uh, torturing the uh, new spec Pirellis while he's at it. That's right. You can see some of the resurfacing down this back stretch. Certainly when the Formula One teams return here for the U.S. Grand Prix. I mean, Austin went through a couple of harsh winners, Greg. Not so much this past year, but certainly before that. A lot of rain. There was a lot of heaving in the racetrack. We had a lot of bumps there. You see that resurfacing finishing back on the old surface here. But talking to the teams and drives, they said they've done a really nice job of matching the grip level between the new surface and the old, obviously eliminating a lot of the bumps, which is why the resurfacing took place. 
And I think the car right in front of this Janetta that we uh, had in the shot, I think that's the 91 of Jeff Burton. And right now, he would be on the provisional pole at this stage. But of course, the uh, lap time's well off uh, what they're uh, capable of. I mean, in the practice sessions, we were seeing times in the 216s, the low 216s easily. And uh, right now, we're uh, up in the 123s, which gives you an idea of just uh, how sketchy the grip is. Oh, tough moment there. Yeah, it's yeah, really a slick out there right now as everyone's just trying to uh, generate a little bit of energy into these Pirelli P0s, get those pressures up, get the temperatures up. Another incident here on the Aston Martins. Oh, no, that might be. This is the new team with Brian Putt uh, put together called B Sport Racing. Of course, he was the champion in the TCR uh, Cup category last year, and they moved up, he and Kenton Cook. And Kenton was wicked quick in the practice sessions yesterday. And again, these conditions catching people out, that's for sure. And right now, Burton trying to figure out a way to sneak around the outside of the number 14. And, uh, red, flag. red flag as a result of all of this activity. So as it comes out, nice lap turned in by Pappas as well. So Whitmer jumped to the front, the number 22, Precision driving tech BMW that he shares with Marco Radisic and went to the front. Even yeah, those lap times, Greg, like 20 yeah. seconds <laughs> off what we saw yesterday, 237.9 is the fastest lap so far. It's a different yeah. compound tire from last year in all of the class, a little bit of a switch up from Pirelli. And uh, we believe in most cases, Greg, it's a little bit harder construction, which will certainly make it a little bit more difficult to generate that tire temperature early in a qualifying run like we're seeing here this morning. Bit more durable, yeah, but uh, still even may happen here. Oh, just locked it up. And that's a fast, fast stretch of track coming into that corner, and it just got away from Brian Putt. He's able to uh, get it going again and limp it around, but uh, I'm sure that car is not. He got uh, away light, though. Look at that really cut race did. car. It does not look too badly damaged. Incredible. That, that new Aston Martin is a sharp looking oh, machine. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely. The turbo engine is essentially the same as the Mercedes, believe it or not, power plant, I believe, talking to some of the teams. Okay. If you happen to be watching live scoring with us online, you're, you're not seeing double. There are two Whitmers in the top three, and they are different ones. That's Carl Whitmer and the number 22 that's up front. Third right now is his older brother, Nick Whitmer, who, of course, ran in the touring car category and touring car A in particular last year. Uh, he's now running with the ST Racing team and he sits third. Yeah, so close to that championship last year. Yes. He won the first four, four or five rounds and then just got pipped, had some mechanical drama through the summer. A very fast family. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And it's that number 28 ST Racing entry which is tops in the new silver category, third overall right now. And then leading in the AM class, the number 17 uh, racers group Adobe Road Wineries, LaSalle Solutions entry with Dr. James Rappaport. And uh, well, I'll tell you, a name that has spent some time in the previously Pirelli World Challenge paddock, but has been absent for a while, it's great to have back. I think a motorsports legend, particularly in GT machinery, Ryan. Greg, I can't disagree with you. Bill Oberlin joining us on pit lane. Greg Kramer just called you a motorsports legend. Bill, you agree with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I do. He's the announcing legend. I'm just a driver trying to like make a living. But what an amazing thing to be here in Austin in a new series with a new teammate, with a new team, a lot of new. Uh, the one common thing is BMW. We know how they run. They can run fast. And uh, this weather is ominous. and seems to be adding something to the to the mix. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You've been watching as we have, and it looks like some treacherous conditions out there. This rain we weren't expecting today. No, we weren't. And then all of a sudden, I, right as James, my, my teammate James Walker, was uh, getting ready to go, I'm like, it's starting to sprinkle here. And um, we know our car lights up pretty quick. Like, it gets on the tires pretty fast, and, and it'll heat them up. Uh, so we could be in good shape. The rain has stopped. A few cars have already wrecked. And I told him, just don't wreck. Come on, just keep it in one piece get through this session and we'll go racing. It's our first race together. Let's just get through this weekend, smooth as can be, happy, get some points and go win this championship. How has it been getting acclimated with the team, with the new co-driver, the new series, new tire, lots of different things that, that are new for you here this weekend? Yeah, everything is new. Um, and purposely, we try to do a lot of pre-work before we got here so that we're not going crazy when we got here. It's actually super relaxed. This whole atmosphere is very relaxed. It's fun. 
uh, which in racing sometimes it can be so intense that it's just crazy. This is so far I'm having a great time being here. And uh, two races, I think it's a great format where he gets to start one race, I get to start one. He qualifies once, I get to qualify. It's how you should bring up a driver and make them a driver. So now they can learn how to start a race, how to finish a race. I think it's a really good way to go. It's a rare thing for a driver to be able to match your level of enthusiasm, but I think James can do it. He's a pretty up and Adam kind of guy, right? James is, oh, James is, uh, he's excited, but he's an he's a interesting guy. People don't know it. He's an engineer by trade. And it's really neat because I'll look at the data and I'll show him something and he will analyze it, analyze it, analyze it. And I told him, we need to be chameleons in this game. If you do something that I like, I'm going to bring it right into my program. You won't even notice it, and I will mimic it. You won't even, and I'll bring it right in. And he's doing the same thing. You don't have to tell him twice. It's straight on the game, and it's it's really nice. We'll see we'll see where he peeks out. But if he if he could do any better than he's doing, I'm going to be so happy. Well, it's awesome to have you here. Good luck when you get out in the race car, and uh, hopefully the conditions stay nice and consistent for us. Well, no, you throw throw a little bit of ink. I love it. I mean, put some rain out there, and uh, we'll see if this BMW gets through the rain. Maybe dry it up. Throw some uh, some curveballs at us. We're ready for all of it. Thanks, Bill. And he's right to be enthusiastic about James Walker. I mean, you know, when he was running TCR last year, he just sort of came out of nowhere, done some club racing, some Ferrari Challenge, and first race here at Circuit of the Americas, ended up with a fast lap in the race. I mean, he's got speed. His mantra was to start the weekend exactly what Bill's saying, just take it easy, build up the speed, and that's what we saw progressively last year. As each race unfolded, he would get quicker, and by the end of the event, he was typically as fast as anyone on the race hook. It's going to be a fascinating combination there, and I think for this weekend, this is Bill's 429th BMW star. He is a legend. He is. He is. He's a. He's also very humble and uh, and everything, but he is he is pretty special indeed. The Andretti McLaren is back out, and uh, that uh, that stoppage didn't hurt them. And obviously, they got in. They never turned any kind of a fast lap. And the rule is, isn't it? If you start the session, then you stop in a qualifying session. You do any work on the car other than tire pressures, your laps go away prior to that. Well, they went out and right back in, so this didn't really hurt them too much. It didn't. Uh, they got a little bit of a reset. And uh, under red flag, you're not supposed to be working on the car, so I'm not sure what extreme lengths they had to go to to uh, adjust whatever they were trying to fix their game. They had some technical issues during the practice day here yesterday. As they down to the inside of Mercedes AMG. Celia Haug, talking with uh, Nikolai Elganian, he was uh, very high on the speed of Matt Celia Haug. Matt won the ADAC GT4 championship last year. And that's a pretty fierce series. He also did some races in the GT4 Euro series. And one of them, Nikolai went over and ran with him at Zandvoort. So they've spent time together. And uh, I talked to, Matt, uh, uh, to Mads and he was so excited to be here. He said, I've driven all these tracks on games. He said, because I love the games that have the other uh, North American tracks. He goes, I never really thought I'd maybe be here. Right. And he said, this is almost unreal. Yeah, they're going to be a fun uh, pairing to look yeah. at this year. And I think they're very excited about getting that new uh, crossbow lead in for the final rounds of this championship. And uh, Zandvoort, that's certainly gone through his look on social media. Max Verstappen did some uh, initial laps on the new configuration. A couple of bank turns Big there for the Grand oh, Prix, which comes up here in a couple of banked, months. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very cool. Um, and just to correct here, uh, it was on the monitors, and they changed it, and it would be correct. Marco Radisic is the guy who's got the revisional overall pole, and that 22 Precision Driving Tech uh, black BMW M4 GT4 with the red love across the uh, rear tires, and that makes sense because he this is a pro amp pairing, and he would be the am in that pairing, so he needs to be the first one out. So. In the silver or the AM category, as I understand, Cal, the team can nominate whoever they want. It's Pro-Am where it's absolutely done by rule. Correct. Okay. They want the uh, lower graded driver to qualify and start the first race and uh, vice versa for the second. Everyone will certainly have uh, seen the cars off in the tire barriers early, so that should, uh, if you weren't aware of it, that should have given you the indication, listen, the track has not got the grip that you're gonna be looking for. Jeff Burton getting the grips here. They had a nice off season, did those thermal events uh, the winter series um, and said that this Aston Martin really got great potential. A lot of teams making the switch over yeah. to the Aston. Got four in the uh, in this class alone for this season, so uh, a big momentum shift. 
Burton had uh, his some superb moments last year in the championship where he did some uh, really, really great things. And I think that Thermal Club is only that inv a winter invitational, they call it, was from Ron's only driver. They gave him an op opportunity to get some seat time. One of the cool things was team owner, Laura Tallman, uh, got behind the wheel and had a, f a couple of wins of her own. Uh, as well, just to sort of uh, refreshing things a little bit and uh, get her uh, lit up about the racing again. Not that she ever really lost that, but uh, it's fun to see her behind the wheel. A little bit of an overtake here, and that is Nick Whitmer. Again, that's the two ST racing machines. Great liveries on those cars. This is really an indication of some of the racing type action I think we're going <laughs> to see this year. So uh, the two ST racing BMW slide inside of Jeff there. He said they are really working hard on the setup. A little bit different BOP that they're running here this weekend compared to what they ran at the thermal event. So he said vesco has got his homework to do tonight. He spoke to him yesterday in the paddock. And again, this racetrack, a little bit different, so the notebook may not be exactly the same as last year in terms of what's going to work with this setup, with this resurfacing, as you can see here, and with, with that the, triple apexer. And with the new tire spec. So That's right. A lot of things that they're, they're dancing around. Interesting, the other thing that has changed in this class, we didn't really address it at the front, is last year, of course, there was an east and west uh, regional championship series that's gone as well it's it's just one national championship but uh, John Miller driving that number 38 car right now Cal he of course was uh, one of the co-winners of that national champion or yeah, the West champion and I'll be curious to see if he gets any uh, lap times taken away here they are pretty um, on the money in terms of the driver meetings here this weekend in terms of that white line determines the track edge and you have to have at least two right. tires on that and through both 19 and 20 I believe he's a little out of bounds so uh, I'm sure until the, uh, everyone up there in the uh, race control will maybe be sending some warnings, and uh, you can lose that lap time. They also said if you do it through turn 20 when you start that flying lap, you could lose the next lap as well. So with only three minutes on the board, you can't afford to get that call because suddenly yeah. you could plummet down the order. Yeah, plummeting up the order. I know that's a weird turn of phrase, but uh, after that early spin by Mad Siliahog, he's jumped to second now in that older generation uh, KTM crossbow so great run there splitting Whitmer and now Miller and you're right watching both of these ST racing cars it was made very clear that the track limit that you had to have a tire on the track defined by the white lines oh that's a big one yeah yeah that was side, Matt Fosnott yeah side hit there so it may not go into the suspension too badly that's the team that was second in the AM Championship in the National Series last year. Wow. <laughs> Able to drive it off. Incredible. We've seen two pretty big hits here. Wow. That Aston Martin a little bit earlier. And that's unbelievable. And the stewards were fairly clear. There was, you know, some spots they said, we're not going to sweat it too much. But what I was getting at, those white lines, they said, that defines the track. The curbs are no longer considered part of the track. You need to have one set of one tire at least yeah, touching like right that. there. That's exactly as far as you can really go by how they described it in the driver meeting yesterday. And Celia Howe goes to the top of the number 71 Marco Polar Motorsports crossbow at 218.367. So we're now getting down within two seconds of some of the fast times yesterday. So this track's starting to come back a little bit. I'm thinking maybe that 28 time got taken away because I do not see them up near the top of the order there. Oh, you're a very good point. Well, again, just on that white line, so everyone pushing the boundaries here in terms of those track limits. Well, Whitmer just took back that overall top time now in that number 28. So I, I think you're right. I think they pulled the previous laps. I think they've talked it again, the though. Mullen. It's gone away again. That lap oh, yeah. time has gone away because that was, the, I said, it was turn 20. Turn 20. That starts your flying lap. So he's running out of time here. This could be a big problem for the 28 machine and Whitmer. Yeah. So right now, Colin Mullen in the Andretti Motorsports Endurance and Window World McLaren jumps to the top. It's the number 36. Miller in the 38 car sits in second from ST Racing. Then Celia Hogg, then Burton still right there in that top four overall and leading in the Pro-Am category. So it's three silver drivers right now, Cal. And the Pro-Am leader is Burton sitting in fourth in the 91 rear racing entry. 
Whitmer's got a good lap going, but he's got a clean up. He cannot afford to get any more track limit violations on what will be his final lap here. But what a rebound for the Andretti Autosport team with technical issues yesterday. Charlie Holt down the second spot. I think Colin Mullen and Jared Andretti, they're going to be formidable opponents this year, overall and certainly in that silver class. And Matt Travis just goes to the top of the NOLA Sport, 47 Porsche. They had that phenomenal start to the season last year. One like the first one, five, six races on the trot. Then had some struggles and ended up just missing out on the championship by a couple of points. But that car has always been good here, that number 47 entry. They lead it now. Mullen slips to second. Celia Hug Burton, 38 John Miller, now sits in the fifth spot overall, third in the silver class. And taking over the AM class top run right now is Sean Gibbons in the number seven entry. That is another NOLA Sport car, so having a good run for that NOLA Sport team. With Pappas, seventh overall, third in Pro-Am. And Alex Welch, who shared a championship in the GTS category a couple years ago with James Sofronis now, sits second in the AM class in the number 14 GMG Motorsports Mobile One Thermal Club entry. There's a look once again at Whitmer. Oh, oh, knees <laughs> right on the edge once again. How are they going to call it? And where does he go? He jumps to the top. Is it going to be clearly defined by the track limits? He had a couple of fast lap times that got taken away from him. That was close, too. That was close. And he was close in other spots of the track as well as we were catching him uh, running the laps. It's gone. It's gone. Wow, that was a critical error there that because sure he didn't was. have a backup lap really to uh, keep him up to the sharp end of the grid. And right at the checker, Celia Haug rebounds with a great lap at 217, 227. Puts the crossbow now on the pole. Watch Travis, he's Here purple he in sector two. <laughs> he can just finish these last couple of corners, keep it clean. Watch the, tra oh, and he's gonna dive in. Has he already taken the checker possibly? Or maybe he was the first so. to take the checker. Well, maybe, but think so because no. the guys in front of him yeah, That's yeah. so Colin Mullen sits third Welch a nice lap Cal up into fourth overall in the AM category GMG Audi Travis had a personal best first sector purple second sector purple means your fastest overall and then dodged the pit lane so but a nice late lap by the number 21 of uh, Mr. Dinan for the Flying Lizards. Up in his sixth overall, third in the Pro-Am class. Flying Lizard in coordination with the K-Pax group, same, same team essentially. They've got three British marks. They're running the Bentley in GT3, and they've got an Aston Martin and a McLaren in GT4. So put the T on, boys. That's a lot of diversity in that program, that's for sure. And I uh, also wanted to note that Charlie Belliardo in the number 37, the RS1 entry, they ran one race last year. He and Jan Halen at uh, the Glen, Watkins Glen, showed some really impressive pace, and it comes to the fore here again. It's the seventh overall, fourth in Pro-Am. Tim Barber, great to see, putting in a solid run here and uh, moves himself well up the order in the Laco in the number 25 CCR Team CFB entry with... Uh, a TCA competitor from last year, Cole uh, Corallo. I'll tell you what, I have not crossed by on the pole. It should be a fascinating race because that car is dynamite through the twisty stuff and uh, still struggles down the long straightaway. So it's a real seesaw battle, and that's why they're looking forward to getting the Evo, the newer version, because it's a lot more competitive on the straightaways. Skinny attire that will run in the, in the new car that they anticipate running at Long Beach. So it doesn't quite have the handling, but... And a bit, a bit less arrow as well that I'm here. It doesn't even have a rear wing on it, but they said we'll take it because uh, the, the key thing for them was they said we just need a little bit more power. Well, they need raceability because exactly. once you start getting pushed down the order, you just can't come back at the, the faster cars down the straightaway. So they can run a lap time as we're seeing when Mads on the pole, but when you get in race conditions, it makes it awfully tough. So here's a look at the top 15 overall. If you... Uh, have the number is black on this uh, on this graphic with a silver background. Well, that tells you that's a silver category. If it's a white number and a black background, that's Pro-Am. And if it's a white number with a red background, that's an AM category car. So you see it fairly nicely split. Two silvers and uh, two Pro-Ams and an AM right in that top five. That is uh, uh, impressive and some great runs by a number of these drivers. Now, uh, as they make their way down into pit lane, they go to their pit box. The only thing that can happen on this is the drivers get out 
and the next driver gets in. They put on the second set of tires that the driver that will start race two tomorrow uh, will be able to start that race on. That's it. Can't do any other work on the cars, and you cannot refuel. So the guys that run that first session tend to carry a little bit more weight in the car, but look at the celebration down there. Well, we're just trying to clarify here. I think it may have been Nikolai in the car for that qualifying run, so timing the score on the ah. show and mad, so... Well, they said, we just heard in the background, good job, Nick. So, yes, indeed. Great job by Elgania. Remember, if you were watching last year, the battle he had with Spencer Pompelli at Circuit of the America, or at, uh, at the CTMP up in Canada, uh, he showed some stuff right there, and you realize, yeah, this guy's for real. And uh, he just proved it here. So, nice run by Elgania. Yeah, he's a fun character. He reminds <laughs> me of Daniel Ricciardo in Formula One. Yeah, you're right. Very much so. And uh, I think that team's going to have a lot of fun. Mads uh, stayed over for the last week, was hanging out in uh, California, having a lot of fun. Behaving himself, he said, but having fun. Sometimes those two things go hand in hand. Right. So here's that tire change we were talking about. And the second driver will get on board. But let's get back down to Ryan and hopefully hear from the effusive Nikolai Elganian. Certainly so. Very excited, Nikolai, when he got out of the race car. The conditions looked treacherous. I saw you giving Mads a bit of a debrief before he jumped in the car. What were you facing out there, especially early on on cold tires? The, the track is really slippery right now because of the light rain. Um, sorry, a little winded. <laughs> uh, there was a, someone dropped a little bit of oil, so on the back part, there's a lot of uh, oil on the braking zone, so I, that's why I told him just to take it easy on the inside. But the range is really good for our car. It's kind of the equalizer we need to keep up with everyone. And uh, I was a little worried when we had that red flag come out, but I was able to put in a good lap, and the team really brought the car together. I mean, we were a bit of a mess yesterday, and they worked hard until the night, so I owe them some food. And uh, this is the previous generation of the car. You're yeah. waiting to get the new one a little yeah. bit later in the season ready to go. I know you've got it on site, yeah. but are you a bit surprised at the pace that you've seen from the old tried and true car here behind us. Yeah, well, the last time we were here uh, was two years ago. Um, I think in the same car, actually, and we were really slow. So uh, everyone's just, we learn as we go, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of the team. They did a great job. Uh, hands off to Marco Polo Motorsports and Mularized. And now Mad's getting behind the wheel, a rider engineering factory driver. Yeah, do you think I'm fast? He's way faster than me. <laughs> You're excited to see what he can do? Oh, I cannot wait. I'm really excited. Awesome. Congratulations Thank on the you poll. So much. Appreciate it. It's kind of a special moment for him, too, because uh, after Sonoma last year, he had a, a training injury, essentially, and had to have sh uh, shoulder surgery and ended his season. So to bounce back with him, getting the first pull of the year, uh, that just makes all of that all of that recovery work and training right. worth every minute. Yeah, I think it was in a volleyball accident. I had a chat with him yesterday about that. And uh, But what a rebound to have that uh, early spin, uh, get away with it, and then uh, have the red flags, he said, didn't have a lap down. and. Uh, coming through and grabbing the top spot. And, uh, his teammate, he believes, is a little bit quicker behind the wheel. He's a Reuter engineering, essentially, factory driver, so he's a lot of seat time in one of these machines. We're starting to get down the last few years here when uh, the GT4 equipment started to make its way into what was then the GTS class. Uh, the pole time uh, was set in 2017, the fastest that I could find, Harry Gottsacker in the Racer's Edge Sin mm. at a 2.17.5. So, I mean, we're in that window, certainly, uh, after this track has dried up, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what we can do. Here's another look at the Aston Martin. Now, that is the B-Sport entry that Brian Putt had the contact with, and uh, it would be Kenton Cook who would be the guy who would take this car out, but uh, they're really thrashing to try and get that car fixed. And uh, I wonder if this is where this is where Nikolai was talking about the oil, possibly, and uh, the crew from Circuit of the Americas, the uh, EV team, is out there taking a look at it. Well, they've had reports, so I think the uh, workers are just out there trying to ascertain if there is any fluid down on the circuit. It's hard when it's sort of a damp racetrack to actually see any oil line that may be down there on, on the surface. My eyes really deceive me in terms of the impact that this Aston yes. had and also the Murillo Racing Mercedes AMG. That looked like a big hit with a wall. Well, the, the, the Mercedes, I mean, the, the outside tires came off the ground by three, four feet. That would indicate some significant contact. Oh, uh, and they did find oil because there goes the, uh, the oil dry. Mm -hmm. 
Well, speaking of which, you were speculating about that. Looked like a lot more contact for the Murillo car than what it uh, ended up being, but let's get the definitive word from Ryan. Yeah, a couple of notes. I just talked to Matt Fosnott a moment ago, and he said, yeah, car's fine <laughs> in spite of it all. He also echoed what Nikolai said in feeling like there might have been some oil down on the track, and as we see the track crews going to work, evidently there might be something to that, and he thought that played into his spin. He actually said he saw a couple cars in front of him having some problems, so he backed up and went offline, and even still you can see the end result right there on screen. So the good news is for Christian Shimshak, who's about to get into the car, Everything is A-OK, -okay, according to Matt Fosnott. And I can report as well that the Aston that we saw have some contact earlier in the race, or sorry, earlier, earlier in the, the session. session. They reported the only damage was a cracked uh, mirror. So they feel pretty good about it, too, escaping what appeared to be maybe some, some heavy contact, but uh, looks like they escaped relatively unscathed. Well, we just had a shot of the other side of, the, of that car, which was the impact side. I thought I saw a scratch maybe underneath uh, one of the decals in the right rear corner, but it bent a little guardrail. So that tells you that this Mercedes AMG GT4 is a sturdy kit. No question about that. You know, look, right in the back there, looks underneath that racing radios sticker there might be just a little scratch or whatever but it's amazing i mean <laughs> it's first session unreal. of the year and i'm confused there's two cars that should basically be back in the paddock being worked on and then we had a car that was on its fast lap bail <laughs> when it <laughs> yep. just gone green and purple through the first two sectors so and uh, whitmer who set fast lap after fast lap and kept getting him taken away knew he had to keep it on the racetrack <laughs> to get a lap dialed in I yeah. wonder with Whitmer whether he was getting the information that, hey, you got it, the track yeah. limits, you've lost your two fast laps, you need to get one in, even if it's a bit more conservative. I mean, I'm sure he'd rather be, he was going for the pole, but right. he, he certainly had a top five car just being conservative and just getting a lap under his belt, you know. Speaking of Whitmer, now on board the number 22, that is Carl Whitmer, who will be taking that machine out for the second qualifying session. Let's go back, take a look at some of the key moments from that first qualifying session for race one. You can see the cars dancing big time up there, and there's that spin by the number 26 of Raider. That's the first spin because they had a bigger incident. Exactly. Further Here on. it yeah, is. Yeah, further around the lap. That was, that was substantial, and there's definitely some damage in the front. Some splitter damage. This is the... Uh, Moment here, Jeff Burton in that number 91 entry up front of the two ST Racing BMWs, and they were chasing him and made some aggressive passes. And then here's Brian Putt, and another big hit in a driveway. Yeah, just the safer barriers there really work out well. But this one against the Armco for Matt Fastner, I really thought that was going to be not so much suspension damage, but I expect to see some crinkles in that bodywork when it drove away. And then the crossbow of Elganian from Marco Polar Motorsports and Mullerized. Just carving his way beautifully, finding the dry, grippy parts of this track, utilizing the agility of that car. And there you can see his reaction down there as he celebrated with a hug with his new teammate Mads. And now we get ready to go. And that bright red machine there, the number 54, that is the Pappas Bleekamolen entry. You were fastest yesterday, Greg. Uh, Jerome topped the second session at a 116.5, which is about seven tenths, three quarters of a second quicker than the qualifying time we saw from Nikolai. And that's the older spec mm -hmm. GT4 car on the Cayman. And there are some people out there that have said they, they think in certain scenarios that car uh, is actually very effective. And we saw, I mean, uh, Matt Brabham used it to mm -hmm. great effect a couple of times last that's right, year. with CRP. And uh, Jerome, he's going for the Porsche Cup this year. A anything that's got a Porsche running, he seems to be <laughs> part of the <laughs> equation. And also going to be running with GMG with uh, James Sofronis in the number 14 uh, Porsche in the GT3 race here this weekend. Yeah, I was talking about that 17 pole time of a 217.5. In practice, they were already well underneath that over a second faster. So uh, with this dry track now, or dry-ish track, of course, this could present a little bit of a problem. Oh, Let's do that high speed. Look at the America. Look at yeah. that. Even the lines are like the lines through the S's, Greg. That's pretty cool. Artistic. That's amazing. It's art, artistry at its best, yeah. Now, if uh, they were red, white, and blue lines, then I'd then be, really <laughs> be impressed. mega impressed. This is the run up into a hugely important corner, turn 11, because in the background there is a fast left kink called turn 10. 
And then it drops, and uh, this is no, one of the unique designs that uh, that was uh, put into this track. You see it in turn one. You see it uh, in turn 11. Is as you get to the uh, braking zone, the track suddenly widens toward the apex, and it's as, it really tends to invite people to try some crazy dive bomb move straight down to the apex. And normally they overshoot the exit. And if you're disciplined <laughs> and wait, get your turn in, get your power down a little bit better. Uh, one, it'll give you a faster lap, and two, you can generally make the uh, counter punch move here. Uh, but this might get people a little bit offline heading into this corner. Just got word from the paddock that Matt Travis said he caught traffic in that third sector. That's why he bailed on his lap. So okay. certainly one of the uh, most savviest drivers didn't want to put an extra lap on his uh, Pirelli's, uh, which uh, they have four sets they've got to work through the various sessions, qualifying and race weekend to work with. So he's a true am too. He's fast, and, they, and the uh, team refers to him as the world's fastest accountant. <laughs> They were fast so. last year. Yes, it looked unbeatable were. and just hard to believe at the end of the day. They just got pipped for the championship. So they have the big scrubbers out trying to... Literally what happens is you lay down that oil dry and then you grind it in a sense uh, you, with those scrubbers or with a flat board that is towed behind something with some weight on it to drive it down through the oil and force it to absorb it, and then you can sweep it up and blow it away for the most part. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, when we restart a session here, you'll see big clouds coming up off the cars for just a little while, uh, but it's pretty effective when it's uh, all said and done. Opportunity here to give us uh, an, a, a chance to say thanks to all the volunteers. There's an awful lot of them that make an event like this happen. And a big shout out to all of the uh, CCA workers out and around this track come out and dedicate their time to provide information and assistance to the drivers and uh, we certainly appreciate it we know those drivers do as well here is a look at the nola sport pit lane busy busy program this year or this weekend anyway yeah. certainly with three cars three cars now yes and um Looking back on last year's results, they won the first five, Matt Travis and Jason Hart, won seven races total, but uh, just got pipped to the championship by Stephen Cameron Racing. And there's the uh, number 25 entry, again, one of the new cars in the program, and it's exciting to see it. Uh, it is the uh, CCR Team CFB entry, and we talked about uh, Cole uh, Corallo. He ran in the, uh, in the TCA category last year, it, with the uh, the, the uh, Honda Civic program, and was pretty quick, and uh, decided, you know what, I want to go up and I want to do this uh, this uh, GT Sprint X format. And Tim Barber is joining him, who's 37 years old. And Tim has certainly done some uh, some racing, but he's also done a lot of road racing, but he's done a lot of midget racing. And uh, so he's in that. If he's sideways, he's probably real comfortable. <laughs> we kind of said that about Mr. Andretti a lot last year. That's right. If if you're running midgets or sprints, there's not a lot that's going to scare you. No these uh, cool attempts this morning and uh, racetrack that's not got a hundred percent grip is not going to affect those guys but um, I think this was cool about coming up through the uh, the various steps on the ladder here and to come up into GT4 competition and have a teammate that you can learn the trade from is really the perfect yes. blend uh, as we listened to Bill Orbelin earlier going to be working with James Walker this year uh, just a great sounding board you can look at the data from exactly the same car and try and uh, match it and learn the trade all right. Well, uh, you talked about a little bit earlier, Cal, the, the great diversity coming out of the Flying Lizard uh, tent and uh, the Capex tent this weekend. And uh, Ryan has Darren Law. A whole lot of changes for all of us, I think, to get used to with Flying Lizard. Been around the sport for a long time, but now we have to say Aston Martin and McLaren when we associate the team with manufacturers, Darren. That's a bit of a balancing act for you, I have to imagine, too, operating under a couple of tents. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously, it's uh, it's a big change for us. We haven't run with Aston. Um, it's uh, they've been a great manufacturer to work with, but it's a, it's a learning curve for all of us from the engineering side to the crew side to the car side, even working with the new manufacturers. But uh, it's been a good change. Early returns from both of these programs that we see here in Sprint X. Yeah, early returns. I mean, yeah, they're they're both doing really well. You know. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And uh, looking at the one of the driver lineups in the Aston, you've got Robbie and Michael. They were together a year ago. How about 
one year removed from essentially making their debut here in the series with you guys last year. How much further along is that program? You know what, I mean, last year was the first year ever for Michael Dynan racing professionally. So it's been, um, it's been, it was a learning season for him last year. So having a season under his belt, having new cars, he and Robbie's had, a, they've had a lot of time together. So I think we'll be a lot better off this year. And in the McLaren, you've got a McLaren factory driver, Michael Cooper, so good in the sprint side of the GT4 championship last year and Aaron Vogel, alongside who's been kind of in the program for a while but really stepping up this year yeah actually aaron's been with us for a couple of years now um really coming out of kind of grassroots motorsports and working her way up she spent a season in a um in a, a lower level series last year and and she's been working with michael all year they, they work really well together and so it's it's a good pairing and i think they'll do really well looks like the cars have rolled back out on track yours still sitting in pit lane but they'll be going out shortly we'll let you get back to work just trying to find clear track for robbie good luck okay thank you Class act here in law. He is, and uh, really such is. an experienced group. They worked with the McLaren GT3 car, obviously, a couple of years ago before they switched over to Bentley. So they're familiar with that manufacturer, but as Darren alluded to, the first time he has the Martin brand, and uh, very impressed with that platform. He to the engine they checked out yesterday. He said, yeah, it's a really solid race car to work with. And Aaron Vogel was very impressive yesterday. He ran a lap times within about a second of Michael Cooper, a teammate, which is uh, really tremendous for the amount of experience that she has to yes. this point in time. It truly is. And they say that she is just immensely dedicated to becoming a top-tier driver, and she's well on her way, no question about that. So officially now qualifying two for the second race of the doubleheader weekend is underway for the Pirelli GT4 America Championship. And again, if you're running a Pro-Am pairing, the Pro now will be behind the wheel of the car. Again, Silver and M, you can have either driver. You just have to nominate one or the other here. And so uh, looking forward to seeing the number 28 there, Harry Gottsacker, who shared that Western uh, Sprint X Championship with John Miller last year back with the ST Racing Program in the GPI Bio Machine. Chasing after the legend. Bill Oblin behind the wheel of the Bimmer World BMW for so many years. Uh, associated Bill with a number of BMW teams, including Will Turner's group, who have raced here on numerous occasions in World Challenge, but prototype technology group. That's right. I remember talking to uh, Tom Milner when they were fielding the BMWs, and uh, Oberlin was running in his own RX-7. And he would come in, and he'd either, you know, he'd be fast as could be in qualifying, lots of poles, but was running components two to three races longer than everybody else because of budget, so he, things would break. And uh, I remember Tom Miller saying, we just decided that he's just too fast to be running against him. <laughs> so we went to BMW and said, let's, let's give him a season, see what happens here. And the rest is history. It really is just... Uh He's just got so much passion. I mean, he's so enthusiastic about his sport, his team, uh, and BMW, of course, because they collectively have had so much success together over the years. And he is a major gearhead. Uh, the stuff that he's built in his own shops and, and the like, uh, he just gets into it and uh, understands the engineering end of it so thoroughly. He loves his boats. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> a manufacturing company that he owns and uh, designs. Look here at the number 14, that's that Global Motorsports Group, uh, Mobile One Thermal Entry. And uh, Alex Welch and Michael McGrath sharing that car here this weekend. Welch, as we talked about, shared a championship with James Safron as the team principal at GMG a couple of years ago in this category. I think in that car, actually. Such a solid competitor, just uh, doesn't make mistakes. Loves his racing and found a great team. GMG Group. He's had a lot of success over the years and uh, they're excited about this new season. James is going to be busy. I think they've got 11 entries this year collectively and 13 drivers. And there's lots going on. Yeah. It's a great. Uh, well, he made the point. He said, uh, this year more than any other, we really want to focus on the customer end of our, of our program. He said, I'll, I'll be doing some driving, but we're really looking at. at uh, a big program for the customers, which includes, and it's kind of exciting, starting uh, a few races down the road, it's the new GT Sports Cup that is going to have, uh, or Sports Club that is going to have GT2 cars along with other types of machinery. 
Uh, but it's essentially an all bronze category. He said it's already allowed us to bring a lot of new drivers forward, and they're excited about it. There's a look there. It's another GMG run program. That is Andrew Davis. Uh, Andrew Davis now, yeah, what, running with uh, Jason Bell for the full season program. Yeah. Andrew just such a solid competitor, yeah. and you know Jason Bell has made a very wise choice in bringing him on board, not only from the coaching aspect but as a co-driver because. Uh, if you're willing to listen, and Davis has a lot of great knowledge to share. He does. All right, up on the back now, Vesco Kozarov is Andrew Davis. Nice lap time. Yeah. Look at that, a 2.15.1. That's by some measure faster than any lap turn here this weekend. So I'd say the track has its grip back in these cool conditions. These engines are really performing right now. Shimshak second, Oberlin third in the number 82. I remember talking the offseason with uh, James Walker Jr. And uh, he said, hey, so, you know, what's the plan? You back with TCR? What you doing? And he said, no. He said, actually, he said, uh, I had somebody ask me, a team has asked me if I'd like to run with a driver who is somebody very special and there's no way I could say no to it. He said, I can't tell you who it is for. <laughs> when the news came out, it was like, uh, well, duh. <laughs> you get that kind of an opportunity. So, pretty cool. Nice run there by Jason Hart, the number 47 Nola. Porsche now jumps up into second. And Nola, by the way, is New Orleans, Louisiana, which is where the team is based. At Nola Motorsports Park. Robbie Foley joins uh, teams with Mike Dinan and that flying lizard Aston Martin. It's going to be tough to get that one to flow easily. Uh, Jason Hart to showcase what Matt Travis may have had potentially to uh, get the fastest lap in that first sector, section session, excuse me, because uh, Hart's now run a 215.8, but that lap by Andrew Davis at 215.1 is phenomenal. Yeah, it truly is. Let's see here now. Silly how jumps to second in the crossbow. And it's Kenton right Cook. There. I'll tell you what, this track limit thing is touchy. Yeah, that was just outside the line. Yeah. Four, four tires, so okay, we've got to be. And Kenton Cook, who's in that Aston Martin for B Sport that had that hard contact, jumps to second uh, with another great lap. He topped one of the practice sessions, so Kenton, nice to have him back behind the wheel. Came up through some the prototype, small prototype ranks and was wickedly fast. Has a uh, big 24-hour win. But, uh, hasn't been able to put together a big program and has been Brian Putt's coach for a while. And Brian said, we need to race together. And they put together this program. And Brian said, I've always wanted to do my own team. And they figured they were ready. And Kenton's wife is the team manager. I mean, they're very, very involved. It's a small program, but a lot of dedication. And uh, with Kenton Cook, you've got a wickedly quick driver. Well, that's why this Sprint X format is so so great for drivers that are learning. We've talked about it yes. a couple of times already this morning. But just to bring in that coach inside the cockpit and allowing you to learn from the data and get the direct feedback is superb in terms of learning. But a lot of these drivers running the edge here in terms of those track limits. So uh, Jason Hart here, he's 215.8. Uh, Fourth right now. Let's wait and see if that one sticks in terms of the track limits. Davis continues to improve at 214.6. Oh, wow. That is a massive lap. So these uh, new Pirellis, this new compound is certainly working really well in these cool conditions. The dampness has gone away, so we've got a dry racetrack and the lap times are plummeting. What a flow through this uh, section of the S's. It's, yeah, it's just. I mean, the cars dance through there so much. It's great to watch, certainly. Nice to have Patrick Gallagher back in the paddock. He uh, run in this category a number of times, and he's back now in the number 33 RS1 entry, the Aston Martin. And he'll be sharing with Joe Dalton. He's out there having a solid run right now. But Davis has just set the marker up there, and it's nine-tenths clear of the field, isn't it? It is. That's something. We're up front right now. Aston Martin second. Crossbow third. Porsche fourth. BMW the first of which. Auburn is fifth. Overall that is. 
Shimshak was right near the top in that number 34 early in the session. He's dropped back just a little bit now. We haven't looking to see something a little bit more, you would think, from Jason Andretti. Currently 13th overall, he's second in the silver class, but that's a team that has had overall success yet last year. Yeah, I don't think he has put together a clean lap yet, so yeah. Jarrett certainly has the potential to run lap times. Colin Mullen, who winds up second in the first session here this morning. I think Davis has recognized the lap that he put in. Uh, it's going to be tough for anybody to touch it. He has just backed off. He was letting cars go by on him here and trying to save a little bit of uh, life in these Pirellis. P0 tires. There's Mr. McGrath. John Halen jumps up into second. Now Hart jumps up into second. The uh, Nola Sport car, the RS1. Well, the middle sector, fastest overall in the middle sector, fastest in the terminal speed as well. 48K. I'll well, certainly hum around this racetrack. That's over 150 miles an hour. That's booking. And Halen, the RS1, uh, they're running two different cars as well in that RS1 program. The uh, Halen entry is the Porsche that they ran last year. And the other one that has uh, Gallagher and Joe Dalton in it, that is the uh, uh, one of the new Aston Martins. Nobody's really giving that Aston Martin a serious look, aren't they? Yeah, just got a lot of momentum. I think everyone saw the potential uh, in, the, in the Vantage. to see here what Carl is going to be able to do. He had one of those those frustrating years. He and Marco really good start to the season and he was heading into the race up in Canada and they were leading in the Eastern Pro-Am category. Had a problem. The team had an issue and couldn't get into the country. Carl of course Canadian was waiting there suddenly didn't have a ride and Frank Gannett put him in his car. They did a late entry into uh, things just to try and get in the championship and he ended up right at the end missing it by just a couple of points. He is a fast, fast driver. Aggressive move there by Hart. Yeah, I think that probably cost him a little bit of time there. Looking around the 77. That's the uh, compass racing entry of Anthony Girazzi and Rich Golanello. Running an AM program. Both have spent a fair amount of time in this paddock over the years. Ken Cook jumps up into second at a 214.96. Hart now at a 214.99. But everybody's still just a little bit of drift to that 214.6 at Davis. But we're seeing people closing in now, Cal. Yeah, certainly the. Uh Racetrack is in great shape, still cool, overcast day, so perfect conditions for lap times to be at their best, and everyone getting used to these uh, Pirelli P0s. New compound for this year. Showcased in the lap times, I mean, well underneath the track record. Absolutely, yeah, by a bunch. Patrick Gallagher now up into the top 10, sixth in the Pro-Am category in the 33 RS1 Aston Martin, just in front of Oberlin. Davis is from purple in the first sector. Oh, here we go. Celia Howe continues to sit pole in the number 71, that Marco Polo entry in the KTM crossbow. Sixth overall, but pole and silver provisionally. I think he may have bailed. I think uh, he will come maybe on pit lane. I'm okay. not sure. And our current AM pole sitter would be the number seven entry. That's Sean Gibbons and Zach Anderson, another NOLA Sport machine that uh, right now sits back in the 13th spot overall, but will be the AM pole sitter at this point. A look at Mr. Halen, who well, I'll tell you, he has been around for a while and has always been nothing but really fast. Ton of speed, yeah, and uh, has really found a great place in the sport in terms of coaching and uh, working with these teams at, at this level in GT racing. Had a great single-seater career, did a little bit of champ car stuff over here in the States. Now owns a bicycle 
shop and uh, Porsche parts shop in Dunedin, Florida, called Cafe Racer. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a great place to hang out and spend money. <laughs> I, indeed, indeed. We lived there for a while, and uh, I walked into this. I went, we, we hadn't been back for a bit, and we went down there, and I wanted to bring bicycles in to get them tuned up, and I went, boy, this place looks completely different. Then I walked through the doors, we're watching, that's Vesco Kozarov, yeah. I think. Yeah, he's a technical issue there. Yeah. He's just trying to find some clear space. Time and has uh, run out, so well, I don't see the purpose point. in that. Yeah. But I walked through the door, and the first thing I see is a Porsche tub. <laughs> and I went, yeah, this is very different here. Ooh, problem here for the 28. Got Sacker. So with time having expired. Yeah, and he's well down the order, currently 18th. Phoenix so West champion from last year. Top five all Pro Am cars right now. Davis uh, in the number two Porsche. Kenton Cook in the 15 Aston Martin. The 47 Porsche of Hart. 37 Porsche of Halen. And the 21 Aston Martin of Robbie Foley. Kozarov, the car we're looking at right now with some technical issues, is currently 14th in this group. Now we have done a control alt delete. That's just, that's just amazing that you get in the first session a car right up near the sharp end of things, in the second session a driver that's equally as good or better or whatever. You know, but that's where those little problems crop up. Bit of a surprise for you to see Mr. Oberlin sitting eighth overall. Yeah, it is, but I think he's the leading BMW, right? So I maybe that's right. just an indicator of uh, where they have pace here. And it's horses for courses. I mean, sure everyone wants to be quick at every single racetrack, but when you go to different track configurations, um, you expect a certain brand platform to maybe be a little bit sharper. Let me throw this at you here. The tire rule for this weekend is you get four sets free to use however you want. Did they maybe just put Bill out on the same set of tires so that they've got a new set for each of the races? Maybe. You know? I mean, everyone has a different yeah. strategy to that, and everyone's trying to get some clarification of how to utilize those four sets here this weekend. So yep. I think there were two ways of doing it, saving them all for the qualifying and race and minimizing the usage during the early practice sessions and other teams using their tires to get the setups correct for when you did get down to qualifying. But then that means you don't have as much time to use during qualifying the race. So everyone had a different way of attacking that, and uh, it's a learning curve as well. Speaking of attacking, this guy, Andrew Davis, in the Global Motorsports Group entry with Frost New York City and Osteria Kitchen and Bar colors on it, putting it on the overall pole, and I bet a delighted co-driver standing beside you, Ryan. Yeah, no doubt about it. Andrew's going to have to drive the car back to Tech. Jason Bell is his co-driver. And, Jason, you told me a second ago you gave Andrew a message before he went out on that qualifying run. What was it? Yeah, I told him, I said, uh, it's the pole or don't come back to the garage. This is the outcome of the two that you would have preferred, yeah? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, Andrew is a great driver, a great coach. Uh, obviously, you can see uh, just by what he did there. I mean, it's just he's a wonderful guy. He's a great guy. And uh, we're excited to have the pole here. And you worked with him some a little bit in the second half of the year last year. Yes. And speaking to you in the offseason, yeah. this is the kind of result. This is what you brought him into your program for this oh, year. Absolutely, yeah. We started that in Watkins Glen, and you've seen the result there. I got uh, third in Watkins, and everything's, uh, you know, it's been great. So this year, he's here with me the whole year, so we're looking for good things to happen. And you're going to be a busy guy this year driving how many cars in how many different classes? Uh, three, yeah. So I'll have some three race weekends, so... Uh, that That's three races a day. Yeah, three races a day, yeah. Yeah, so six total in a weekend. Well, yeah. good luck. Yeah. You're a busy guy. We'll let you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You can tell he's now a Florida boy. <laughs> it's 55 <laughs> degrees out, and you got the uh, ski hat on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he is just uh, he is obviously very keen on what Andrew Davis brings to the program and can bring to him personally, and you've been talking about that. That's what makes this format so great as we take a look at the top 15 overall as you can see as I alluded to the top five uh, all at this stage in the uh, Pro-Am category then the silver entry on pole and six so a double pole for the uh, Marco Polo KTM crossbow and then uh, back in the 13th spot overall looks like Zach Anderson is the guy who was on the provisional pole in the AM category and this is now for race two yeah, certainly a fascinating session for Andrew Davis. He will be stoked about that. He said, I can't believe that I've got a ride here this year. But look at the people up against Orbelin and Bleak and Molin. But to go out and do what he did this morning is certainly an early season statement for that group. 
It absolutely is. Here's a look at the rest of the field and how things went in qualifying for them in this uh, second qualifying session for race two. This race that this session was for will unfold tomorrow. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And, of course, very busy day here. Uh, everybody qualifies this morning. We'll be bringing every session to you here on our global live stream. And then uh, we have a busy afternoon of races for every one of the groups that are here. And uh, up next, when we come back, it will be the two qualifying sessions for the season opener of the GT World Challenge America, powered by Amazon Web Services. And uh, we're looking forward to that. But here we go. Let's take a look at highlights from this session now. And uh, it's the number 28, an ST Racing entry. Some of the key cards, again, impressive just to see that orange Murillo entry out there without any issues at all. This was the man of the session. Andrew Davis dives down on the inside on one of the BMWs. The Porsche looks exceptionally strong here this weekend, and Andrew Davis taking full advantage to uh, claim the top spot. And there was this big spin by McGrath. He uh, spun to the inside, so didn't have any kind of contact, was able to continue on. Here's the number 37 in the hands of Jan Halen, who was right up at the sharp end of things very frequently in this session, but when it was all said and done, it was Andrew Davis and the number two Global Motorsports Group Porsche that he will share with Jason Bell putting it on pole. So with that, qualifying for Pirelli GT4 America Sprint X is complete. We're going to step away for a moment, but we will be back very shortly with qualifying for GT World Challenge America, powered by AWS.